My name is Bucky Buckholz. I had been drafted out of medical school into the German army at the age of 19 after the German invasion of the Soviet Union began, which in my opinion sealed the outcome of World War II. Had madman Hitler not read the story of Napoleon's defeat in Russia, I became convinced that I was to be used as cannon fodder in the prolongation of a lost war. I felt sad and discouraged and abused when going through basic training. On Mother's Day 1942, which began for me at 3 a.m., when our platoon leader woke us up by shouting, get up and put on your battle gear. Today is the day. We knew that he meant the start of the spring offensive against the Soviet defense system, which had been fortified during the six months winter lull in combat activity. Consequently, heavy casualties were to be expected on our side. How cruel, I thought, to pick Mother's Day because now many of the mothers would get bad news instead of flowers. We had spent several months in a primitive farmhouse and a miserable condition until this Sunday morning when our offensive was set to begin and visit our so-called baptism of fire. What a bizarre, revolting term. On the march to the front line, I thought of past Mother's Days. My thoughts were suddenly terminated by the start of a horrendous aerial bombardment of the enemy's position. When it stopped, our artillery opened up with a barrage of uninterrupted fire for about two hours. By then, we were in the trenches, joining the sentries who had been on duty during the night. A young fellow soldier, also new at the front, ended up next to me. I asked him, do you know today is Mother's Day? No, I forgot, he said. Suddenly, the artillery fire stopped. A whistle blew and we were ordered out of the trenches and onward to the enemy lines. I was scared, certainly not wishing for my baptism of fire. The fellow next to me and I were up and ready to go when a burst of machine gun fire mowed him down. He could not have been out of the protective trench for more than three seconds. He did not make a sound, just threw his arms up in a flaccid, helpless movement and fell forward dead. Of course, I was shaken but I had to move on. Not until later did I think of his mother and whether she might have woken up with a nightmare when his life was snuffed out like a candle. We advanced in a fairly flat, treeless terrain, given the enemy artillery splendid target, and were we pounded. Madness, madness, I thought, and it was out of my control. I tried to keep up with my comrades, some of whom did not rise anymore. Suddenly, in this landscape of horror, I saw a Soviet soldier sitting on the ground with a devastating wound to his left upper leg. He gestured for a drink, and my instinct was to let him have some of my water supply, but my platoon leader would not have any of it. Forget it, he shouted. We must go on, the medics can take care of him later. Later? He might be dead by then, I thought, but obeyed, only to torture myself subsequently for not defying the order. The pain of this failure stayed with me for a long time. Why was I alive? I wrote a long letter to the parents but did not say what was really germinating in my heart, namely a growing dislike for a male-dominated society 
which legitimizes killings of human beings as a means of solving national problems. It's not heroes who sustain life with their sword, but mothers with their indulgence, unending care, support, and love. Love above all.